Hey friends, Catherine here from Research Rockstar. Thanks for joining me here again today. So today I would like to talk about a debate that is going on in the market research and customer insights profession. And the debate has to do with whether or not people in our field are qualified for an interesting new career path. So let's get right into it. First of all, if you are on LinkedIn and you participate in any of the market research groups that are on LinkedIn, there's some really exciting conversations. And there is a conversation going on right now about this very debate in the Quirks Marketing Research Group. So Quirks Marketing Research Review hosts one of my favorite LinkedIn groups for people in market research and insights. And if you check it out, you'll see that there's a debate going on right now on this very topic with lots of great commentary and lots of different points of view. So I invite you to check it out. But one of the things that's been interesting to me while participating in this debate and exchanging points of view with some really interesting people is that it seems to me that a lot of people in market research and customer insights are sort of deferring to people who are from the data science or data analytics or big data areas. It's almost as if people from market research and customer insights are assuming that those folks have some secret sauce that they don't have, that they have more of a strategic point of view or have more clout. And I totally appreciate that right now there's certainly a lot of great PR for big data predictive analytics and so on. There's tons of articles about these topics in mainstream business publications like Forbes and Inc. and the World War and the Wall Street Journal. But that doesn't mean that there are always going to be uh, these conflicts, right? It doesn't mean that everybody is either going to be market research or big data, right? The truth of the matter is that, that the silos between different data functions within organizations are being broken down. The executives who run mid to large organizations have become very painfully aware in recent years that they've got data silos and they want to bring those data silos together. So they know or they've become increasingly aware that they've got not only market research data, but they have customer data, web analytics data, Google data, social listening data and so forth. They have many, many different types of data and methodologies. The challenge is that the business executives, the C-suite folks, they know what they need to run the business. They know when they need certain types of information to help make strategic decisions, but they aren't always uh, detailed enough in terms of specific data skills to be able to translate their business needs into scopable data projects. So here's what's going on. The identification of the need for this type of in-between role is really heating up. So I've been talking about it for a bit here at Research Rockstar and I've presented at this topic at a couple of different industry conferences in the last couple of years, saying that one of the career opportunities has to do with being the data agnostic advisor. Somebody that business people can come to with their specific business needs or business challenges and have that data agnostic advisor who can take a step back and in an unbiased way say, hmm, in order to meet your needs, in order to deliver the information you need, here's the right data sources or the combination of data sources or methodologies or analytics approaches that will best meet those needs. Now, McKinsey published an article in the February issue of Harvard Business Review. And I actually talk about that article actually in episode 38. So you can catch that on episode 38 here on YouTube or on the podcast if you want the audio only version. But also in this McKinsey article, they talk about the need for what they call translators. So McKinsey is saying translator, I'm saying data agnostic advisor. In either case, it does seem to be that there's this emerging need for this role that can act as the go-between between between the business folks and the many, many, many different types of data folks that are out there. Now, the truth is, is that there are a lot of data folks who are specialists. And that's true whether you're in the, quote, big data side or the market research side. We all know market researchers who are really great at qualitative research, but maybe not quantitative. And we know people who are really great at survey research, but they would, but they don't, they know nothing about, say, ethnography. But there are also market researchers who do have expertise in multiple areas. And in that respect, they're already acting as data agnostic advisors. Regardless, 
there are a lot of people who feel that this translator role may really belong more to people coming from a big data area. I don't think it's that clear. So first of all, let's establish, do you believe that there's going to be growing demand for data agnostic advisors? Do you think that this makes sense that as organizations make changes to break down data silos so that they have better cross-functional and cross-data projects and to remove friction between different data functions, do you, do you think that's going to happen? I think it's pretty obvious that the answer there is yes. I do believe that there's a career here. I think the debate is who's going to own that career. What types of existing professionals can, and I hate to use the word pivot, but pivot into this new career path? Do you think it's going to be an entirely new breed of professional? That's what McKinsey is saying. They're saying we're training people to provide that function because we think it's an entirely new thing. But in their article, not once did they reference market researchers or customer insights professionals. So is this new data agnostic advisor, is the McKinsey translator truly an entire new profession? There's nobody in existing professions that are already most of the way there with the qualifications. Could this be a job or career path for a market researcher or for a career uh, customer insights manager? How about for a data scientist or a big data analyst? Which of these types of folks do you think are most likely to fill these roles? I believe that there's too much uh, negativity within the market research space about our profession. And one of the things that has really struck me in the debate that's going on on LinkedIn is that there are people coming from the market research side who are saying, oh, this new role is a role for data scientists. It's not a role for us. It's almost like people who are in market research are their own biggest critics. And I think it's really unfortunate because actually I see a lot of really great reasons why people coming from market research and customer insights are actually better qualified for these new roles than people coming from a data science or a big data background. First of all, many market researchers are already data agnostic. That is, I know many market researchers who are equally comfortable recommending when to use quantitative methods versus qualitative methods versus both. Right? So sure, there are people who are specialists, but there are plenty who are generalists, who know when to recommend different methods. So if they take on this translator role, will they have to become acquainted with even more data options? Yes, but they've got a great foundation. So I think that's a great starting place. Also, a lot of people in market research and customer insights in the last few years have really strengthened their focus on being consultative and collaborative. It's been a huge advance in the profession. And frankly, I think that's why also the job titles have changed. You know, 10 years ago, a lot of job titles in our profession were literally market research or marketing research. And we see the word insight, customer insight, consumer insights is more is becoming increasingly common because we're trying to convey we're not just about providing data. We're not just collecting the data. We're also working to help make sure that the business can apply the data. And I think that that's something that this translator has to have. This translator role has to be somebody who doesn't just say, I know what data you should use. They have to be able to help the business person translate it and be able to put it to use. So that whole idea about being consultative to really understand what the business's needs are so that they can scope a project, but also to be collaborative when that data comes back to make sure it gets applied. I think that's a skill that many market researchers have. Also, many market research and customer insights folks are excellent with communications because they have to be. In our job, we have to be able to run meetings, write effective status memos, write effective reports, uh, sometimes even do public speaking or speaking in front of large groups. We have to be good at helping our clients, whether they are internal or external clients, socialize the results of research so that they get put to use. So, Verbal and written skills are already something that many market researchers are excellent. All of them? No, but many of them truly are. And the other thing is truly the amount of new knowledge that would have to be acquired in order to take on a truly data agnostic role, it's achievable. Because being able to be data agnostic doesn't mean being able to program in Python. It doesn't mean being able to use SQL or R or to be able to set up dashboards yourself in Tableau. It does require knowing when to recommend 
using different data sources. So if a business person comes to you with a challenge, you can say, well, considering all of my options, which include traditional survey research and qualitative research methods, as well as what data is available in our customer database, what data is available to us from our e-commerce analysis, what data is available to us from social listening, and so on. Yeah, you have to learn about some of those new data sources and methods, not to the point where you're actually using them yourself, but enough so that you know when to recommend them and how to scope them. And that is absolutely achievable. So what do you have to learn? If you do want to pursue a path of being a data agnostic advisor, the good news is explore it. If it's something that's interesting to you, at least do some reading. Check out some books, look at some of the online journals, check out free videos on YouTube, check out some of the free training or low cost training that's available on sites like Coursera and Udemy and edX. Of course, here at Research Rockstar, we offer training as well. But if you think that this might be an area you want to get into, you're going to have to learn about things like customer analytics, web analytics, predictive analytics, A-B testing, customer lifetime value analysis, market basket analysis. That's a good set of initial topics. Again, the goal is not to be able to actually conduct all of these analyses by yourself. The goal is to know enough about these different data sources and methods so you know when to recommend them, that you understand what their strengths and weaknesses are that you know what the risk factors are when using some of these different methods so that you can truly be that data agnostic advisor. So here's my concern. I see that a lot of people who are in market research and customer insights just defer to anybody who's got big data or predictive analytics or customer analytics on their resume. And I think that's unfortunate. I think many market research and customer insights folks are selling themselves short in our new data uh, sort of ecosystem that we live in. Business executives know that they have many, many sources of data these days. And the truth of the matter is, is that they need people who are truly agnostic and aren't going to be biased about areas they specialize in. You know, one of the things that came up when we did an episode, I did an episode a couple weeks ago, it was episode number uh, 39 on the top seven reasons why big data projects fail. So check that out on episode 39. And two of the most common reasons were about really ultimately lack of consultative skill. So many business executives saying the problem with big data projects is that there's too much focus on technology and not enough focus on outcomes. Another big complaint that big data projects tend to get overpromised, right? There's a lot of over overpromising and under delivering. So those are soft skills. So sure, there are big data and customer analytics folks who have wonderful specialty skills, but that doesn't mean that they are in any way better prepared or better able to be that consultative advisor. So stop being your own biggest critic. You have a lot of wonderful, great skills. If you feel that the opportunity for a data agnostic advisor, if you're buying into this, if you think that this is something that's happening and you think it's interesting, check out some of the free resources, do a little bit of training, see if you're comfortable learning about some of these things and be realistic. And I think you'll quickly find that you are able to learn enough about new data types, new methodologies to be truly a data agnostic advisor. I hope that conversation was helpful. Do check out the conversation on LinkedIn in the Quirks Marketing Research Review Group. And if you are interested in doing training with us here at Research Rockstar, we do have a class on data fluency for marketers that's coming up in June. And you can check that out at training.researchrockstar.com. If you have any questions, please do post them in the comments. Also, please do subscribe and like. If I keep seeing the, subscribe, the subscriber base grow, I'll keep doing these episodes. And if you have any ideas for other conversations you'd like me to post about, please do let me know. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day.